Hey there, friends. It's Mrs. Bailey, and today we are going to be reading about Amelia Earhart, Queen of the Air. And while we're reading this book, try to think of those words, Queen of the Air, and think of why Amelia Earhart may have been called Queen of the Air. And as always, please try to follow along. I'll put my cursor down every now and then, so in case you're lost, you can catch right back up. So let's get started. Amelia Mary Earhart was an American pilot and writer. In fact, she was considered a pioneer in the world of aviation. She was the first female pilot to do many amazing things. Earhart was very courageous or brave and never let anything hold her back from her dreams. So that word pioneer right here. If you've read any of the other books that I've talked about, women's, women's history, you've probably heard that word. But a pioneer is just being the first to do something, probably in your field of study. And aviation, that's flying or operating an airplane. It's just anything to do with airplanes. Born in Atchison, Kansas, on July 24, 1897, Amelia Earhart began her journey through life an adventurous and independent child. Unlike most little girls in the early 20th century, Amelia's mom encouraged her daughters to be physical and brave. She wanted them to try new things and didn't expect them to always act like proper little girls. Amelia and her little sister Muriel played baseball, basketball, rode horses, and went fishing with their dad. They weren't afraid to try new things, and this helped Amelia become the incredible woman she came to be. So back then, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, little girls were expected to act like little girls. You play with dolls, prim and proper, wear your little dresses, but that's not how Amelia and her sister were. They did whatever they wanted to do, and their mom encouraged them to do that. They knew, actually I read where her mom knew that it would keep them healthy being physical like that. As a child, Amelia's family moved around often. After graduating high school in Chicago, Amelia went to college in Pennsylvania. During this time, she had the chance to vacation in Canada where her sister lived. Now, Canada is north of the United States. It's the country right above the United States. While there, she started caring for hurt soldiers in World War I. She decided that this was what she wanted to do, so she dropped out of college and joined the Red Cross, where she continued taking care of soldiers. And if you were with me when we read about Clara Barton, you'll find out that Clara Barton was the woman who started the American Red Cross. When the war was over, Amelia moved back in with her parents, who were now living in California. This is where she went on her first airplane ride and fell in love with flying. She began taking lessons from Nita Snook, one of the world's first female pilots. Amelia realized this was what she wanted to do with her life, so she started saving up money to buy, buy her first plane. And in order to look more like a pilot, she bought a leather jacket, and cut her hair short like other female pilots. I also read where it only took her about six months to a year to save up money to buy an airplane, which is pretty great. This right here, the the hats, that the kind of the old-timey hats that the um, pilots used to wear, it's called an aviator hat, also called a bomber hat, and it kept pilots' heads warm when they were flying, and the goggles protected their eyes. Remember those planes way back when? They didn't have an enclosed cockpit. They were um, open air, so having a helmet was required back then. Within a couple of years, Amelia had earned her pilot's license and continued flying as a hobby. Shortly afterwards, she moved to Massachusetts and began working as a social worker. She also occasionally wrote for the local newspaper, and of course, her articles were usually about flying. At the time, Charles Lindbergh, a famous pilot, had set a record as the first person to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. People were wanting a woman to do the same thing, so promoters asked Amelia if she would like to be the first. Although she wouldn't be the pilot, 
She liked the idea of being the first woman to cross the Atlantic, so she agreed. Okay. So, on June 17, 1928, Amelia Earhart, along with pilots Wilmer Stultz and Lewis Gordon, departed from Newfoundland, Canada, headed across the Atlantic Ocean. So, somewhere up around here is Newfoundland, Canada. And this right here is the United States. And this country up here is Canada. So she's on the easternmost part of Canada. And they're going across the Atlantic Ocean. This right here is the Atlantic Ocean, folks. Going all the way over here to... What does it say? I haven't, hasn't said it yet. Going all the way over here to Wells. We'll find that out next. Okay. On June 18th, they touched down in Wells, a country next to England. Amelia wrote about her journey in a book called 20 Hours, 40 Minutes. And with her husband, George Putnam, she toured across the United States promoting her book and speaking to women about flying. This brought her a lot of attention and newspaper reporters began calling her Queen of the Air, a perfect name for Amelia. Think about why that might be a perfect name. And her husband was a publicist, actually. So he was somebody who promoted somebody or promoted a, a thing. In this case, he was promoting his wife, Amelia. In other words, he was getting her out there in the public, letting her be known. In 1929, Amelia helped start an organization of female pilots called the 99s, of which she was the first president. Their name comes from the original 99 members. After flying across the Atlantic as a passenger, Amelia decided she wanted to be the first female pilot to fly across the Atlantic Ocean by herself. And in May of 1932, she did exactly that. Leaving Newfoundland, Canada on May 20th, she landed 15 hours later in a farmer's field in Northern Ireland. Her destination was Paris, France, but due to technical difficulties, her trip was cut short. After her trip, she wrote another book about her life and interest in flying. It was called The Fun of It, published in 1932. So I bet that farmer in Ireland was pretty surprised when he saw a plane land in his field. Don't you think? After writing her book and her trip across the Atlantic, Amelia continued making history with her flights. She was the first person to fly solo or alone from Hawaii to California, then again from California to Mexico City. But what she really wanted to do was to be the first woman to fly around the world. This had been done before, but never by a woman. Amelia set this as her goal and started planning her trip. She chose her navigator, Charles Noonan, and on May 20th, 1937, the two departed from Oakland, California. So over here, when it says she was the first person to fly solo alone from Hawaii to California, I looked that up. That flight is actually longer than the flight across the Atlantic Ocean that the, she took with the other two pilots or that she did alone. Um, let me see. I think I wrote it down. Yeah, from Hawaii to California, it was 2,472 miles, so 2,472 miles. And the trip from Newfoundland to Ireland was only about 2,000 miles. So even though it was still the United States, that flight was actually longer, and she was the first person to do that. Down here, when she decides that she is going to fly around the world, it says she chose her navigator. Do you know what a navigator is? A navigator is someone who gives directions. He's the one who is going to tell her where to go. And they use um, instruments, maps, and sometimes even the stars. They flew south to South America, then east to Africa, then continued to Asia. On the last leg of their journey, they left Papua New Guinea headed toward Howland Island, but they never arrived. They were 22,000 miles into their 29,000 mile trip. 
they are believed to have crashed a hundred miles from their destination. So this map down here says Amelia Earhart's final flight. She started off right here in Oakland, California, flew all the way down to South America, and then it said she flew east into Africa, and then into Asia, down here to Papua New Guinea, right about here. Papua New Guinea is uh, kind of near Australia. And where these little dotted lines come into play, that's where they never hear from her or her navigator again. She was not far from arriving in Hawaii, which would have put her around the world. Hawaii is probably up here somewhere. She almost made it 22,000 miles into a 29,000 mile journey. Amelia Mary Earhart died doing what she loved. She was a dreamer and a doer, a pioneer and a hero, and her legacy lives on as an inspiration for all little girls and boys alike. And over here, it's got a little girl that looks like a dreamer. And then down here, it's got her all grown up, if that was her, and she's a doer. Even though she didn't make it around the world, which was her goal and her dream, she still lived her life and lived her dream by flying a pilot in general, by being a pilot in general. So she still lived her dream. Pretty amazing woman. So friends, I hope that you learned something here today. I enjoyed reading my book about Amelia Earhart with you. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.